guys, I thought that I would do a little vlog here today and just kind of show you what I'm doing to keep myself busy during these weird times of quarantine. Um, you know, as you guys know, I live in Arizona and we are on what is called a stay at home order. It's really relaxed. We are not being told to stay inside. In fact, the, the theme that they're going by is stay home, stay healthy, stay connected. So they are encouraging people to get outside and exercise. They're encouraging people to get out into their yards and do gardening. And they're encouraging people to stay connected virtually. So using Zoom or Facebook or uh, FaceTime or any of those kinds of things just so that people don't go crazy not seeing their families and one of the things that we've been doing with John's family is we've been meeting every Friday night. The grandparents, the aunts and uncles, the, you know, the grandkids, all that, everybody gets together on Zoom. And we just, you know, the first time we met for th about 30 minutes, everyone just kind of touch and base, how you doing? And, and we don't all live near each other, you know, like, um, of course, we're in Flagstaff. Um, some of the family is in Phoenix. Um, um, my sister-in-law and her husband are in Idaho. One of my nephews is in California. Another nephew is in South Dakota. And so, you know, we're kind of all spread out, but I'm hoping we'll keep doing this even after all of this is over because I think it's been such a fun thing. The second time we did it, we were probably on the phone for an hour and a half or more, and we were laughing and we were using Instagram to take those filters that you can take pictures and it makes you look like a bunny or whatever. But they have, they have some filters where if you're a guy, it makes you look like a girl. If you're a girl, it makes you look like a guy. And so then we're, we're texting it to a group text to all of us while we're on Zoom and we're all just laughing and, and just had a great time. Um, we met again last Friday and that one was we were probably together about an hour. We didn't get into a laughing fit. Well, we did at the end, got into a laughing fit. But um, anyway, so that's been kind of fun. And so they have been encouraging us to stay connected and, um, and a lot of stores are open. So I'm not exactly sure what kinds of things aren't open. I think maybe bookstores are not open. Uh, salons are not open. Um, and like gift shops and stuff, but I know Sportsman's Warehouse is open. I don't know why that's considered an essential business, but it is. So John's been, John goes over there, but they're just encouraging people to stay home as much as possible. If you can work from home, work from home, uh, that kind of thing. Construction has not stopped. Landscaping has not stopped here. And so, um, people are not feeling like prisoners but people are kind of itching to get out. I know I am, but. So people have been encouraged to do all kinds of outdoorsy things, go hiking, even on the news, they talk about great places, great trails to go hiking on where you wouldn't come in really close contact with other people if they were there as well, you know, where the trails are wider. Um, you know, uh, a lot of our friends are going camping. It's still pretty chilly here at night, but if they have like a, tent trailer kind of a thing with a heater. It's, you know, it, it's reasonable to, to be able to camp. That's in the North Country. In Phoenix, it's definitely a nice time of year to go out and camp. Uh, boating, people are doing boating. And so, yeah, it's not like they're keeping us from from buying paint <laughs> like like um, the governor of Michigan. They're actually encouraging people to do things like that and, and take advantage of the time that they're home to get projects done and things. So so they they are they're being pre they're really reasonable here. They are definitely encouraging people to wear masks in public, although um, I, I went to the store the other day and I would say, I actually went to a garden center and then I went to the grocery store and um, I was wearing a mask. But um, I would say probably 60% of the people were wearing masks. So there are still people who are not. Um, but yeah, so so it's it's not been terrible. But we definitely feel that, you know, like it's different. You know, when you drive around, people are just not on the roads. And there's not any traffic at any particular time of day. Still, the grocery stores, you know, are cleared of toilet paper. I don't get that at all. Thankfully, before all this started, we already had, I always stock up on toilet paper, and so we already had 25 rolls for the two of us, so it wasn't a big a, a big deal. I haven't been freaked out <laughs> about that. But yeah, so it's, it's not been that bad. But 
Um, but I've been trying to just, you know, do some stuff, be productive, uh, do some stuff around the house and, and uh, get outside and go for walks. And I did bar three today. Actually hadn't been doing that for a little while, but I can access bar three online with my membership. I chose not to cancel my membership, even though the studio had to close down. Um, just because I love the owner and I hope she doesn't go out of business. And so she has agreed that anybody who ch chooses to stay a member, like continue to pay their membership every month, that in the coming year, they can they can either give a month membership free to someone or like I could get a free month. And after starting after next September, then so that it's not like everyone in, everyone chooses to get September free. Um, you know, at some point they'll schedule when your free month is. And, um, but because I'm a member, I can access their online videos. Now, if I was not a member of this, of a studio, a physical studio, I could sign up for a bar three and just pay $30 a month to have online stuff. And so, but you know, I just chose to keep paying I'm hoping they don't go out of business because I would like to go back there when all of this is settled down. But yeah, anyway, so um, so yeah, I, I got back into doing that and I've been doing gardening, getting that stuff going and uh, cooking and different things. So anyway, I just thought I would give you some snippets today of some of the things that I've been doing to keep myself busy. So come along. Oh, and just to let you know, that mystery thing that I can't tell you about, which is the reason I'm not doing regular vlogging, is still going on, um, but I just was able to get a few little things to show you today. And just to let you know, Arizona, last I heard, has uh, 5,200 cases of COVID-19, and in my county, there's like 200, there's under 300. The other day when I checked, there were 266. Unfortunately, most of those cases are coming from the Navajo Reservation. Um, a lot of, lot of sick people from the Navajo Reservation, a lot of deaths from the Navajo Reservation. And a, a large portion of the Navajo Reservation is in Northern Arizona. And so it seems like that's where the majority of our cases are coming from, not so much from Flagstaff itself. Although I've talked to a few people who've had symptoms that seemed like they were COVID and you don't know because if you're not sick enough to go to the hospital, you're just not gonna know, right? Until we get the antibody test. But yeah, so we're not, you know, we're not, we don't have what anybody is referring to as hot spots, but we definitely have a good number and definitely worth paying attention to. This is the view uh, looking down from my deck and you can see that I put out my walls of water. I, I amended the soil, put down some composted mulch and mixed that in and then these are walls of water. I'll have a video on my other channel, My Flagstaff Home, if you want to see what that's all about. But it basically protects the plants when there's still a possibility of freezing temperatures. So anyway, I have planted eight tomato plants and three more are still inside growing in the arrow garden that I will put there. So doing that and you know all these places where there are little orange flags are places where I'm planning to plant some things and John is going to put out some water lines there. So I'm going to put peas I think over here and there's this there's wire I don't know if you can see it that goes across so they should climb and over here straight ahead I'm going to do squash this is a finch feeder, by the way. It's ugliest bird feeder, but it's really pretty when the birds are on there. Um, so squash over here. And then along here, I'm going to do, uh, what was it? Oh, cucumbers. Yeah. And, oh, and for the peas, I'm doing snap peas. And they, those are really good climbers. And then in this garden box out here, I still need to put the, the mulch out there. I have garlic that's coming up that I planted last fall. And then the main part of the bed, I'm going to do greens. And I think that's it. So, um, yeah, we're going to have the fence put in here in a few weeks. And so that's going to actually cut out the back part of my garden. So we're going to have them move the rocks that are around the back and put them around this way. So the garden's going to come forward. Same with the, sorry, my feeders are in the way. Same with that one. The back part of it's going to have to come around 
um, and you know the garden will the flower garden will come in this way a little bit um, this over here is just this concrete slab. We're actually going to put some rock and stuff up around it so you can just fall off of it. And it's going to be another little seating area, like with a fireplace, or fireplace, fire pit, like roasting marshmallows kind of a thing, um, chairs and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, I put up, um, my hummingbird feeder yesterday. It's my neighbor's yard. Um, I heard hummers when I was out here and I was so excited so I put out one feeder I have like five and I'll probably when when it gets a little warmer I'll take this one this feeder down because this is kind of winter bird seed and I'll put another another one there and then I don't know where else I'm gonna put my feeders I don't like to put them like I have some of those hooks you know that you stick in the ground and then you can hang it but that makes the feeder only about three feet off the ground and I don't like to do that because we let our cats out sometimes in the backyard and it just sets up those hummers for getting killed by the cats and so I'd rather have them on these hooks that kind of extend away from the deck and then they don't risk their lives just to get a sip of sweet water. I put our cushions out uh, the other day but um, have not put any flowers in these pots because it's still going to be going down to like 35 degrees at night and you know it, I, I just don't want to have to plant twice and also in this bucket here I have a whole bunch of my lawn ornaments I'm going to revive some of them I'll do a video on it on my other channel but um, when we lived in Camp Verde the sun just beat the crap out of my lawn decorations and so I'm going to spray paint these some brighter colors and I like to do the flea market garden concept. I have videos about that over on my Flagstaff home if you want to check that out. And so I like to hang decorations on the fence. And so when the fence is built, then those things will go up. Another thing I'm doing to keep busy is um, making um, a cross-stitch Christmas stocking. And this is for my little grandbaby in California. And so her name is not Adrian. <laughs> That's just what was on the pattern. Let's see. So I'll show you how far I've come on this. And I just started it this month in April. So that is how it's coming along. So it's a snowman. It's got a cat, a rabbit, and a penguin who are carolers. They're singing. There's some little bells and stuff. And there's a lot of background of blue. This is like a tree branch. It's going to have leaves and stuff coming off of it. So, yeah, been working away on that. For today is that I'm going to make some Amish friendship bread. And um, I'm, let me just tell you, there's a website. It's called Friendship Bread Kitchen. FriendshipBreadKitchen.com. You can actually, you don't have to get starter from someone else. You can start your own starter. And the other great thing about it is that you don't have to, um, you know how, if you've ever done this before, every ten, every so often you feed it so that it, the starter has like a yeasty smell. And then um, every 10 days you have to bake something. But if you get sick of it, if you get sick of taking care of this thing and you get sick of baking something every 10 days, you can just freeze this and you can freeze it for months. And then when you pull it, when you're ready to make something again, you can just um, pull it out and thaw it, and that's day one of the whole process. And then once you get to day 10, then you bake something. So I am going to just do the regular old um, Amish Friendship Bread recipe for what I'm gonna bake today. But if you go to Friendship Bread Kitchen and go to their recipes link, they have recipes for all kinds of stuff, even like dinner rolls that are not sweet, um, pizza crust, they have, uh, what else, um, pumpkin scones that I love. So there's a lot of things that you don't have to be making sweet things. And they also have modifications for you for if, you're, if you don't want to use dairy, if you don't want to use milk, if you don't want to use um, something with gluten, there's gluten free. So check that out, friendshipbreadkitchen.com. What I have been doing is putting makeup on every day just so that I'm not just falling into this rut being at home all the time. And I just thought I'd show you my, um, my favorite foundation 
right now is this IT Cosmetics CC Illumination Cream with SPF 50. And I use, I use this um, Maybelline, what is it called? Instant Age Rewind stuff for concealer. And today I put on my makeup with this palette, the um, Makeup Revolution, it's the Emily Edit, the Needs. She also has one called the Wants. It's just a basic palette that has blush and bronzer and this kind of highlighter, um, different shadows, and so I have that on today. My Big Cosmetics Eyebrow Pencil. Um, this is Urban Decay 24-7 uh, waterline eyeliner, so it doesn't come off with a waterline or tight line very easily. I'm just using an Ulta eyeliner in addition to that. Um, what else? Oh, and then I always use this Needles, it's Dr. Brandt. Needles no more, no more baggage, and you put it under your eyes, and it flattens out puffs, and it works great, and I swear by it. And the mascara I'm using today is uh, Roller Lash by Benefit. Also thought I would show you this. This is something that I have been using for a couple of months. I got sick in January. Uh, there's a part of me that's kind of hoping that maybe I had COVID at that time so I would have antibodies, but of course I don't know that. And after that, a friend of mine was telling me that she's been taking this Moringa powder, it's in capsules, for two years and that she hasn't, oops, oops, she hasn't been sick in two years. And I thought, I'm so sick of being sick. I got sick in the fall too. And um, so even after having a flu shot, I still got sick. So I have been, John and I both have been taking two of these a day. So it's by Nature Vibe Botanicals. I got it on Amazon. It came with two of these containers. I think I paid $17 for it. Something like that. If I remember, I will link it for you in the space below. If I forget, let me know. But this comes with 180 tablets. So if you take two a day, this one container would last three months. And so actually, um, it comes in two, with two bottles, and so I gave one to John. He's been taking it as well, and just kind of hoping that if we have boosted immune systems, that if we do end up getting COVID, that we will be able to fight it and not have um, very serious cases of it. And then I have this little routine of essential oils that I use every day. Um, I use, uh, this is Lady Scleriol and Sclerescence that I put on my wrists, it's supposed to relieve menopausal symptoms. Um, stress away, I put on my chest. Joy, which is one of my very favorite uh, essential oil blends. I put that on a, just a drop, like over my heart. They say to put it over your heart, I have no idea why. Uh, Valor, um, I put a drop of that behind my ears. This one is called Endoflex, and that's for thyroids. I put that right on my thyroid. Um, then um, this one, Progescence, is a serum that I put on my forearms, and that is supposed to help with um, your progesterone levels. And then I take a little bit, a uh, drop of Thieves, and put that on my feet, on the bottom of my foot, on my feet, and that is supposed to make you healthy and ward off um, uh, illness. So um, I've been doing that, but without that, um, these others that I put on, I can't tell you how often I've had people say, gosh, you smell so good. What, what perfume are you wearing? I'm like, well, you know, it's a combination of seven different <laughs> essential oils. But, um, but I love it. It's kind of my signature scent these days. And these are all by Young Living. Monica, for you, she is still going to day camp one day a week. She loves that. Um, she got real fat after we moved into this house and uh, we changed over her food and she slimmed down a little bit. So before we were saying that she looked like a tick with just this fat body and a little head, but she's, she's actually um, looking much better now. Chad, he's running away. Yeah, there's a beautiful boy. Yes, yeah, a beautiful boy.
Yeah, want to get in the camera? There you go. Mary is not thin. <laughs> she's a chubbo. She's, you know, she was a, um, she was a stray. As you know, she was a stray. And so she, um, she always thinks every meal's her last meal. And so she, she hoards food and she steals Chad's food. So we always have to give Chad extra food because we know Mary is going to eat up his. <laughs> this is leftovers from last night. I made a calzone. I've actually been doing this frequently and kind of changing what I put inside, but this super easy recipe. This is refrigerated pizza dough. And you just buy it in those tubes, you know, where they have the P Pillsbury biscuits and stuff like that, but they have pizza dough. And then uh, what I do is I mix up some ricotta cheese. This has ricotta cheese, mozzarella cheese, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, and some oregano, and some pepperoni that I chopped up. And then, uh, hold on, Monica. And then I roll out the pizza dough and put this on half of it. It's, it comes, it's like a rectangular sheet. So, um, so it ends up being a rectangle calzone, not a half moon kind of a thing. Anyway, so then I spread that, um, that filling in there and flip over the top and then you wet the edges and then um, pinch them with a fork around the edges. So otherwise, it, if you don't use, if you don't wet the edges on the inside, then the edges won't stick and it'll open up. And then you poke some holes in the top. Um, and then I put a little water on the top and sprinkle some sesame seeds on there so that they stick. And then you put it in the oven on 450 for about, mm, 10, 12 minutes until it gets to be a nice little tan color. And then after you take it out, you let it rest for five minutes. And then I make this sauce on the side. This is just diced tomatoes that I, before I put the diced tomatoes in the pan, I fry up a little garlic, put in the diced tomatoes and some basil. And then I let it cook down so that there is very little water left. And as you can see, it is rather thick. And then I just use that to put on bites of, of the calzone. I've also made this with a kind of a marinara sauce on the inside and some different things. So you can kind of play with it. I've also made it without meat, but it's really good, super easy and very quick. So, and then really great as leftovers. I just put this in the toaster oven for at 400 for five minutes and it was perfect. So here's how the bread turned out. I actually just wrapped this up and forgot to film it for you. This is one loaf. The other uh, loaf I already cut part of it and I gave it to my neighbor. And it wouldn't come out of the pan, so I had to cut a slice out of it first so then I could get it out of there. But it's super tasty. Um, what I liked about this is that they have... Um, Instead of, like, you know how you dust a pan with flour before you put bread in that you're going to cook? Well, this you dust the pan with a mixture of sugar and cinnamon, and then you put the remaining sugar and cinnamon on the top. So the browning here that you see, and that, that's what that is. Um, anyway, super tasty. And remember, if you go to friendshipbreadkitchen.com, they have all different kinds of recipes for ways to use um, friendship bread starter. Well, you guys, that is going to be it for today's vlog. I hope you, I hope you, uh, I hope you liked it and uh, hope you guys are doing well. And I really uh, like the little motto that's being used in Arizona. Um, stay home, stay safe. No, what is it? <laughs> stay home, stay healthy, stay connected. Um, so anyway, would love to hear from you guys in the comments and hope you guys are doing well. And uh, I don't know when I'll get a chance to do another little vlog for you, but, um, but when I can, I will. And uh, take care. And don't forget to check out some new gardening videos that will be going up over on my other channel, My Flagstaff Home. Take care, you guys. Bye.